Hello everyone, Anna from Red Journey here and today I am back with another scoring tutorial. This pattern is going to be a little bit different from the ones that I've showed before because this time it will not focus on a radial design. So it will look less like a flower um, but I think it's still a pretty versatile design because it fits any kind of dough and I think it looks pretty stunning. So I will start with flowering the loaf because I find that often uh, people ask me questions about the contrast in their scoring and why the white is not as white. And there are many reasons for that. Uh, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will help you out if you experience this problem. But another factor is how you flower the dough. Do it generously. Do not be afraid to get flour around it for it to be more than you need it. And then just very gently massage it into the bread. While you do this, you make the flour spread in a uniform manner, but also you get rid of the excess flour, which will make it more difficult for your blade to cut through. Now, here comes the important part. I mean, everything is important, but this is something that I have not specifically explained in my previous videos. And this is how we are going to lay the grid for a loaf that is not scored in a circle. So we start just like we used to with the central two lines. Now, um, after I'm done with the lines, I will tell you what is an easier way to do this. Um, if you like, what I'm showing now is what I think is the proper way to do it. It may be trickier to lay down the lines this way, but it will certainly make it easier for your scoring to be symmetrical and pretty. So, so far, nothing is different. We add one more line. You know how this is done now. And so from here on, we are trying to turn this round loaf into a set of squares. So my next line is here. And I will keep the thread for you to see the triangle. Do you see it? That's what I'm looking for when I'm learning where to put the thread. So I don't want it here or here. Try to imagine where you would have a square. And so then you complete the square by starting in the same triangle at the other corner. And just like that, you have here a small square. Now we place the second line diagonally and complete the square on top. Okay. And the bottom ones, you just connect the two points. We have one central square, but we are not done yet. Connect through the corners here and here and here and here. Okay, same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four. And now we can go around and just perfect the edges a little bit. You will see there are spaces where a line will just complete the squares. Okay. This is what I was going for. It's now a beautiful grid. Um, I will turn it so you can see what we are going to use. So what we are going to use is 
this as a square unit, the square in the middle. So we have one, two, three, four, five complete squares. And then the corners are these kind of half squares. So if you do not want to fuss around with all these lines, you could just go straight and do the outlines like these two lines and then these two lines and that can be enough but because we're going to score also in the middle um, I would like to have some guidelines here too now I'm taking out my lovely little UFO line from its holster and getting ready to score uh, pay attention to the order of the scores that I'm doing now because after I'm done I will give you another option which depends on the kind of flower that you use. This loaf right here is a 50%, almost 50% whole grain loaf. So I don't expect too much of a rice from it and I will score accordingly. If you prefer to make white loaves I will tell you at the end what adjustment you can make. So now I start in the central square here in one corner and score a small wheat stalk, just like that. And then one here, one here, And one here. Okay, um, this is the central element. Now to embellish the square a little bit, I will just add these rather shallow lines. Note how they do not connect. It's almost like a stitch, which is what I'm going for and then some here in between the wheat stalks. Okay, now I will just quickly do the same thing with all the other squares. Okay, now if this had been a fully whole grain loaf or um, a loaf made with a starter that is not as springy, you could have just stopped here. Um, even if you make a loaf mostly using all-purpose flour, because I know we now live in times when getting a hold of bread flour is more difficult, you can just keep it here. But we are going to go one step further. So. The scores that you make first are the ones that open the most, but also the ones that kind of dry out, so they will not be as springy in the oven. I'm now going to make some more functional cuts, which are not so much for the design, which are rather meant to help the bread open up nicely and not just burst wherever it wants to. So I am going to just cut along the lines that divide the squares. So if this had been a white loaf, I would have started with these cuts just so that the loaf doesn't spring as much along these lines and doesn't form ears. But because this loaf, I don't expect it to be too springy. I'm okay with leaving these to the last and starting with the smaller cuts so that they have time to open up and look pretty. So now just carefully cut along the thread lines. Thank you. 
Okay, now you notice that in some places the dough snagged or didn't cut quite through. So at this stage, make sure you open up every cut so that you can see the bread exposed inside. And you can even do extra cuts so that they go deeper, just like this. If you do not do this, then these seemingly small spots where the dough holds together, they will be extra strong in the oven. And so they will not allow your bread to open up the way you wanted it to. Be careful to not just look on the surface. Sometimes like here, um, the surface is opened up, but they don't spread as much as the squares over here because the dough still holds in some spot. Okay, I think this looks good now and it's ready to go into the oven. I will get back to you when it's baked. I'm back. Here is the bread fresh out of the oven. Like I said, it hasn't grown a whole lot as you can see, uh, but I'm certain that the crumb will be beautiful. And you see how the cuts have spread sideways? If this loaf had been a mostly white, it would have gotten more spring, it would have grown up, and all of these little squares would have curled up with ears. Um, so if you want this sort of effect on a mostly white loaf, you would have to do these cuts first. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you try to score your own loaves this way. I can't wait to see you post pictures and tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, and as always, I'm always here for your questions. I'm happy to give you feedback and happy baking.